When you think about Tasmania, you probably think about a verdant wilderness, untouched beauty, the Tasmanian Devil, and maybe the Tasmanian Tiger. What you don't think of is the Grand Canyon, true? Well, it might surprise you to hear that Tasmania shares a very close link to the United States, and a particularly intriguing relationship has been found between it and the Grand Canyon. The fact is, Tasmania is old. Really old. It's a little over a billion years older than Victoria, New South Wales and much of Queensland. The connection between it and the United States takes us back over a billion years, revealing a story about the supercontinent Rodinia. I originally made a video that delved into Tasmania's rich geological origin a little over a year ago. In it I discussed how Tasmania was comprised of sediments that were related to East Antarctica and the United States, particularly in Arizona. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. In this video we're going to take a closer look at the evidence that exists which links these two landmasses in detail. Tasmania is an ancient microcontinent. It only collided with Australia some 500 million years ago. In its early construction, Tasmania was constructed from sediments that flowed from the rivers of North America and Antarctica into a deep ocean. These ancient sediments are what Tasmania in present day is composed of. A rift event then occurred which tore Tasmania away from the North American landmass, leaving sections of it in North America, whilst the rest of it drifted away as a lone microcontinent. It originally existed in the Northern Hemisphere, but it has ended up an ocean away from the American landmass. To understand the link between Tasmania and the Grand Canyon, we must first delve into the concept of supercontinents. Rodinia was an ancient supercontinent that formed about 1.1 to 1 billion years ago. Unlike the more famous Pangaea, Rodinia existed in a much earlier geologic era known as the Proterozoic Eon. During Rodinia's existence, what is now Tasmania and parts of North America were neighbours. Geological evidence suggests that Tasmania was positioned along the margin of Laurentia, a large landmass that forms the craton or ancient core of present day southwestern North America. The key to unravelling this ancient connection lies in the study of rocks and sediments from that era. In recent years, geologists have discovered that certain rock formations in Tasmania share remarkable similarities with those found in the Grand Canyon's Unka group. These rock formations are not only similar in age, but also in their geochemical compositions. The Unkar group in the Grand Canyon contains sedimentary rocks that were deposited during a significant geological event known as the Grenville Orogeny. This mountain building period occurred between 1.3 and 1 billion years ago, and left behind a series of basins filled with sediments. These basins, known as foreland basins, were formed as the land was compressed and deformed by the tectonic forces of the mountain building event. A foreland basin is essentially a structural depression that forms adjacent to a mountain range, due to the immense weight of the mountains and the tectonic forces involved in their creation. As the Grenville orogeny progressed, the weight of the newly formed mountains to the east of what is now North America caused the Earth's crust to bend and form a trough or basin to the west. This basin stretched across what is now the southwestern United States, encompassing areas such as present-day Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and into parts of California. In this foreland basin, thick sequences of sedimentary rocks were deposited. The sediments came from the erosion of the rising Grenville Mountains, which transported vast amounts of material into the basin. Over time, these sediments were compressed and lithified into the rock layers we see today. In the Grand Canyon, these layers are known as the Unkar Group, which includes dolomites, shales, and quartz aronites that are around 1.25 to 1.15 billion years old. Similarly in Tasmania, the Rocky Cape Group represents a comparable sequence of rocks. The sedimentary layers in the Rocky Cape Group mirror those of the Unkar Group, both in age and composition. This suggests that during the Mesoproterozoic Era, Tasmania was located along the same tectonic margin as southwestern North America, and experienced similar geological processes. The tectonic setting that led to the formation of this foreland basin was complex and involved the convergence and collision of continental plates. As these plates pushed together, they not only created mountain ranges, but also generated the conditions necessary for the formation of extensive sedimentary basins, like the one that houses the Ankar and Rocky Cape groups. As Rodinia began to break apart, these basins were left as remnants of the ancient geological processes. 
The discovery of similar rock sequences in Tasmania and the Grand Canyon has provided geologists with crucial insights into the paleogeographic reconstructions of Rodinia and the ancient positions of its constituent landmasses. So in Tasmania, the Rocky Cape group represents a similar sedimentary sequence, with rock layers that mirror those found in the Ankar group. Both regions contain an older package of dolomite and shale dating back to around 1.25 billion years ago, topped by quartz-rich sandstone from about 1.15 billion years ago. This stratigraphic similarity provides compelling evidence that Tasmania was once part of the same geological environment as the southwest Laurentian region. But it wasn't only the Tasmanian landmass that has these similarities. Before the recent rise in sea level, Tasmania was connected to mainland Australia and the island known as King Island was a mountainous peak. But King Island also contains the same rocky cape geological group as Tasmania does, showing it was once also connected to North America too. As you can see, the entire island is comprised of this geological group, which isn't surprising as the microcontinent of Tasmania actually stretches into far north Victoria, so it's much larger than the island we know and love. Further evidence comes from the study of zircon minerals, which are used in uranium-lead dating to determine the age of rocks. This method is one of the oldest and most reliable dating techniques, often used to date ancient rocks and geological events. These minerals also carry isotopic signatures that reveal information about the rock's origins. In both the Ankar and Rocky Cape groups, zircon analysis indicate derivation from a crust dating back 1.8 to 1.4 billion years ago similar to the basement terrains in southwest Laurentia. The presence of these similar rock formations on opposite sides of the world suggests a fascinating geological history. During the time of Rodinia, Tasmania was likely connected to southwest Laurentia, and the sediments that would become the Rocky Cape and Unka groups were deposited in a continuous basin along the margin of this supercontinent. As Rodinia began to break apart around 750 to 633 million years ago, these landmasses drifted to their current positions. The separation was driven by the forces of plate tectonics, which continue to reshape the Earth's surface to this day. It's quite hard to get an accurate picture of ancient supercontinents, and things only get murkier as you travel further and further back in time. But through the careful analysis of rock formations, we are slowly piecing together the history of the Earth, one fragment at a time. I hope you found this video to be as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started a second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I've released a video on the marsupial lion which existed in Australia during the time indigenous Australians walked a continent. I've also covered the wombat that was the size of a car, known as the Diprotodon, or the largest terrestrial lizard known as the Megalania. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released. You can find a link to this channel and to the aforementioned videos in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.